Welcome back to the Impact Lounge. You are in the number one place to be for the Impact Wrestling fan. This is the Cool Factor Podcast. I'm your host, TW, and with me, of course, is the man with the plan, BQ. Say what's up to the people. Yo, what up, everybody? Welcome to the number one Global Force Wrestling Podcast on the planet. <laughs> <laughs> Jeff Jarrett endorsed. Yo, I'm pretty sure uh, Jeff Jarrett and Global Force Wrestling follow me on Twitter, probably. Maybe. They used to. Really? I know they used to. I don't think <laughs> they still do. <laughs> too funny man i was actually I, I watched that uh global force anthology or whatever they called it series and i actually really enjoyed it so i'm yeah, actually kind of disappointed it never got off the ground and i've made this comment before all this forbidden door shit jeff Jer- that was the vision of global force wrestling like years ago you know what i mean it kind of sucks he never saw that come to fruition but yeah well you know i mean a lot of it was his own doing you know what i mean unfortunately yeah. <laughs> unfortunately while well, that was his own doing but you know it is what it is what's in the past but i gotta say though like they were pretty slick with the way they 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 had this whole thing planned out um the there was a plan for tna to become a uh, global force like from the jump um and and it's crazy because you know like nobody 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 was like made aware of it you know what i mean and they tried to do it really nice like they tried to tell a nice story of you know the ending of tna and the takeover of uh of 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 global force it just you know again jeff jarrett shot himself in the foot he shot himself in the foot with his own issues he shot himself in the foot with his cronyism right like bringing back all the the list of you know old heads who he's worked with back in the day and you know, basically called him up saying, "Yo, come get a check," you know, and um, <laughs> right. and 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 you know, never at any point, you know, did I, I think they really had growing the business in mind, and it just, you know, whatever it happened how it was supposed to, you know what I'm saying? So, whatever. Little Jeff Jarrett talk to start off the show, random, yeah, <laughs> random GFW chatter, yeah. Um. So before 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 we get into the show. Please just take a second and hit that like button. Hit that like button right now. Like it, like it, like it, like it, like it. If you are new to this channel, go ahead and hit the subscribe button. Um, And if you haven't already, hit that notification bell so you get notified each and every time we drop some brand new fire content right here on this page. All right. So um, we're recording this on Friday night, the 7th. As you guys know, Hard to Kill takes place on tomorrow the 8th which is when you guys will probably all be listening to this so there's really no need for us to dive into this past week's episode of impact it was the go home episode nothing really happened diana perrazzo beat uh the mercedes martinez and you know um the inspiration got into a little you know push pull with the uh influence and that was really you know nothing 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 of, of of note really happened you know i typically feel like the go home shows are the worst shows of the year yeah. Usually when I sit here, I'm like, yo, I'm bored as shit. I don't think this is a good episode. It's usually those go home ones, man, because it's almost like they, it's like, it's like it, it features a bunch of people that have nothing to do with the pay-per-view. I mean, it happens every single time. And then the people who are in the pay-per-view, it, it's cookie cutter, like brawls, you know what I mean? Like the end of the show brawl, Josh Alexander and so-and-so brawl, um, but it, you know, it, it was it was an okay episode. It was fine. I, I didn't I didn't love it. But one thing about this hard to kill build is that in all these feuds, man, they let everyone get their hands on each other too much. Yeah, and I don't I know agree. if it's just like the old school fan in me, dude, where I just you know, like keep them away from each other. Like, so when Jonah attacked Josh Alexander, he should have wrote that motherfucker <laughs> off TV for like two months, you know? Yeah. Instead mm-hmm. of Josh just keep showing up and trying to, you know cut promos or attack him or whatever like he should i think josh was home for a couple of weeks i feel like we didn't see josh for a couple of weeks after jonah like left him like with the blood in his mouth and all that i think there was a little bit of time that josh was off tv but they they came right back and you know they had to pull apart part brawl and actually this is the first time that the two of them really got their hands on each other since uh jonah beat him down at was it turning point Um, i could have swore it was another one but i guess i guess i'm wrong 
I think so. I could be wrong, but I, I think I think that was the first time. Um, so yeah, man. I, I think, but I think this has actually been done well. But again, I, listen, we we say this all the time, man. Like the social media space, this this world we live in, right? Our brains are constantly inundated with what we're seeing on social media. So you you got to keep reinforcing your message, right? Like you got to keep you know pushing it and making sure we see it. You got to keep it in front of us. You got to push whatever your narrative is on social media. Um, to make sure that we're still following it, right? Like, don't just expect us to build up, like the voice of your, of your, the impact faithful is not strong enough right now to influence others to come along and, and get on the train. You know what I mean? Like you got to still do some selling and pulling to get those AEW fans to come over and start you know, supported and talking about Impact Wrestling too. Um, you know, the Jonah and Josh Alexander build has actually been pretty good, right? Like again, Jonah got over on him real good, left them all bloody. You know, they kept him apart for a little bit. Jonah cut a nice promo. Josh Alexander came back tonight and got after him. And they had, you know, a big brawl that made them both look good. Actually, Jonah left them laying again. So again, if you're telling this story that Josh Alexander is your, you know, your baby face, who's overcoming the odds of having to beat this monster, right? This modern day Samoa Joe, right? Then you, uh, then, then look, you know what I mean? Like if, if that's the story you're telling, then I think you're doing a good job so far. But if you want other people to talk about it who aren't already watching Impact every week, you got to promote it, you know? So there it is. I just thought it was one of those feuds that could have benefited from like Josh not showing his, showing up to the pay-per-view where the story was like, is he even going to make it? You know, and every week Jonah just calling him out, like, where you at? You know, I would you know, like that. Him. That would have been nice too. That would have been yeah. cool. Yeah. So, uh, but we, we won't, we won't chat, you know, talk too much about Hardy Kill predictions, considering when you guys hear this, Hardy Kill will be the same night of the, as the podcast episode. So, what we're going to do tonight, as CW said, we're not going to review the show. Nothing really happened on the show. Uh, we're not going to, necessarily pre we're going to talk a little hard to kill here and there we're not necessarily going to run it down and preview we're just going to talk about uh some of the impact wrestling news that's going on right now and everything that's popped up this week so it's been it's been a big week news wise so uh as tw said we're recording this friday night they just announced that mickey james was going to be in the royal rumble uh they even name dropped the impact Knockouts world champ. I'm never gonna call it the world knockouts world champion. It just doesn't roll off the tongue. So I'm always gonna say <laughs> knockout champion. But they said knockout champion on WWE TV, insane because that's they've never even like remotely come close to doing yeah. something like that before. You know the WWE Twitter name dropped it, uh, and of course you know Impact retweeted it and all that good stuff. So it's been getting it's been getting a lot of chatter on social media, which is good. So give me uh give me early thoughts about this whole thing. This is dope, man. This is dope. This is real fire. Um, and, you know, it takes two to tango, right? Like, um, kudos to Impact for having somebody WWE wants to use. Uh, WWE, with all the releases they've done this year, they were in a real jam. And for them to, a lot of people were openly asking, who the hell are they even going to put in the Women's Royal Rumble this year? Um, and, and, and. Santina. It, right, say they got called Santina back again. Yeah, but yeah. E but even that though, right? Like, it's a huge risk because you know, listen, like we're 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 in another serious wave of COVID. Like, it's taking out sports. It's taking out stuff. Like, you know, I don't know if America is willing to go on another lockdown, but with the level of uh of of contagiousness of this current variant, at least just from what we're seeing, right? This is not my opinion, but with the level of contagiousness you could make an argument that we probably should do another lockdown. I don't think we will because the economy is too important. Um, but with that said, right, if you're a WWE, you're going to, you're planning on bringing in like all these people do the Royal Rumble. You probably need to bring these people in and quarantine them for 10 days before the Royal Rumble, just to guarantee you get a show off. Right. Because like, right, like, you know, and, and we'll, we'll talk about this, but look what's happening to hard to kills card right now, right now. And you know, um, Scott Demore just better be like this la, 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 for the next 24 hours because the people who, who we've heard about already might not be the only ones. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like, the, you know, it just, 
this is a highly contagious level that is at right now. Like this thing is spreading. People are catching it, you know, whatever, you know, fortunately, you know, it, due to the fact that a lot of people are vaccinated, right? Like people aren't being hospitalized as much as they were. Um, but like, but yeah, man, like I said, so, so, so that part is crazy, but Nikki, Mickey James, you know, uh, being a part of the Royal Rumble as the knockouts champion. And that makes me wonder something though. My first question when I heard this, because they announced that the impact knockouts champion is going to be in the Royal Rumble. Does that mean Mickey is going to keep the knockouts championship? Cause I was assuming she was losing it. I was assuming she was losing it. And that Deanna Perrazzo was going to, uh, you know, take that back and then go get the ring of honor world championship, uh, women's championship and just have, you know, again, another collection of belts, which I think is still dope. Um, but if you're impact wrestling, do you want your knockouts championship to show up on the Royal Rumble? Look, I'm going to say, I know it sounds like a super impact thing. We're like, yeah, we, we want the title to get on, you know, WWE programming. I said WWE programming. <laughs> Think about two, three, uh, probably about three years ago. You remember Brian Cage wanted to be in the, the, um, what do they call the uh, battle royal? Oh, uh, AEW does. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Was it the uh, what is it? The casino battle royal. Casino battle royal. But they weren't even letting him in the battle royal because he was a world champion and he wasn't going to win. Mm. So, if we were see- using that same logic, that's good logic though, because especially when you look at again, Kenny Omega held the damn Impact title for what six months, and they wouldn't let him take a pin to an impact star so, <laughs> right so, yeah, so you know turnabout is fair play in that respect but i don't know i, I mean like I, I think you know if i if i was you know a, a scott demore or someone i had a chance to kind of negotiate this i would i would want the title to go on <clears throat> on the royal rumble but i would have to offer i'd have to ask you know like look let her get two eliminations you know what I mean? Like, let her get two eliminations. Like, don't let her jump in there and get thrown out by, like, Dana Brooke. Like, you know, your lowest level of, you know, <laughs> like, let her get thrown Summer out by, Ray. like, Charlotte or Bianca right. Belair, right? Like, like one, this is our champion. She needs to, if, if she's going to get tossed out, she needs to get tossed out by your champion. You know what I mean? Or, or, or something like that. So it, I would want some sort of, of, of considerations like that. But I think the reality is, Impact can't tell her no, <clears throat> right? Like, right. like, um, I don't think she's like an impact contracted wrestler. Um, you know, she's probably working like per appearance dates for them or something like that. Um, excuse me. Like they don't, they don't have the ability to tell her no. And so, um, I'm just guessing, but I'm pretty sure they don't have the ability to tell her no. I, I don't think they would want to tell her no if they could, right? Like that'd be a really bad look. So, um, yeah, I mean, I, I don't know. I, I think, like I said, I think if it was me, I think I would want the knockouts title to show up on the Royal Rumble. Um, and then, like I said, I would just, I would just ask for just a little concession. Like I said, let her get two eliminations. Let her get two eliminations before she gets tossed out, and and then and then we're cool. And don't have her get tossed out by like you know some somebody who's like a low level you know job or like have her get tossed out by somebody of note. You know, then right. you know I, I think I think that's good. I think that's a fair ask, right? That's not yeah, a crazy yeah, yeah. ask. So, yeah, but I think overall it's big news. I think it's big for Impact Wrestling to have their name mentioned because people like to act like Impact doesn't exist. You know what I mean? Like, people like to act like Impact doesn't exist. They're the the, the stinky kid in the cafeteria that people feel okay about picking on because they can get away with it because nobody's going to defend them. And so um, that's the way people treat Impact. So by having Impact mentioned by name, having the Knockouts title mentioned by name, on WWE TV and on WWE social media, I think that's a big deal. And I think it may call into question whether or not Deonta Perrazzo is getting that title back tomorrow night. Yeah, and, you know, Scott Moore tweeted, oh, you know, WWE are entering the forbidden door. Well, Mickey James, most people relate her to WWE. like, it, <laughs> And she's not contracted anyone, so she's not really – doing the forbidden door the forbidden door is impact title being involved so you know to an extent yes forbidden door but do you think that this help so of course everyone on twitter you know oh this is going to be so beneficial for impact and for nwa like do you, do you see it like that i mean 
Name recognition um, wise, yeah, you know, it is good to be in front of, you know. No, I mean, like, listen, it would be it would be big for Impact if you know, like I said, if they're going to have her come in there and be one of the final four, have some sort of great run, which I you know, listen, I don't think it's a bad idea, right? I don't think that's a bad idea. I think it's a it's a great if you're WWE, right? Like, you could really like really punch AEW in the gut by doing their thing better than them. You know what I mean? Like mm -hmm. if you were to say, if you were, if, if you were WWE and you were to say, look, um, we will give you, you know, we'll, we'll do some forbidden door with you for a year, but you can't do any with AEW for the next two years. Then impact's going to take that deal. You yeah. know what I mean? They're going to take that deal. And if they were like, yo, we'll, we'll, we'll do it for you. We'll let, you know, um, we'll let your world champion, come defend his title on Monday Night Raw. What? You, do you remember back in, like, it was, oh, I had, like, 97, 98. Um, they, they let, like, ECW come to WWE and, yeah, like, yeah. have matches on Raw. And, like, if, if WWE were to offer something like that, Impact would never pick up the phone for AEW again, okay? Like, yeah. <laughs> so WWE could totally do that if they wanted to. And I think it would be good for, I think it would be good for Impact. Um, you know, looking, I think just having Impact Wrestling name, having their, their, their name mentioned, it, 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 um, it, it's different from what WWE has traditionally done, right? Like WWE stance was we're on an island all to ourselves. Other companies don't exist. This is the WWE universe and other, other promotions don't matter. Whoever you were there doesn't matter. Only what matters is who we say you are. And the drones of brainwashed WWE fans follow along with that. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like WWE fans, lifers will tell you, oh, it only matters if it happened in WWE. So, um, so yeah, so I think, you know, is this going to change Impact Fortune? I don't think so. But I think it's one of those things. Like I said, just getting the mention, I think it goes a little bit towards kind of tearing down the stigma that you know impact is you know uh not at the cool kids table yeah I, I would agree and that wwe reach is very very powerful now granted AEW, you know i said that was good for kenny omega to have the impact world title and defend it in front of a million people on rampage i think that's that's great but the wwe reach is is something different i mean they did a um they did a special like on the Hardys. This was like four years ago, I guess. And Impact had to lend them some footage. And at the very end of this little Hardy documentary, or whatever, they're just like, you know, download the Global Wrestling Network for more. You know, they give them a little 30 second plug, man. And, and Impact like shattered their single day download record for the Global Wrestling mm. Network, you know? Wow. With just yeah. just a one little plug so you know that that wwe reach is very very powerful boom you know and so. that right there right like i mean that that's the thing that i think um you know impact could greatly benefit from right was it you know one thing i think impact has stopped doing um that they really could stand to do a lot more is doing these type of special things with people while you have them there like i can't believe they don't have an EC3 documentary ready to go. You know what I mean? Like, you know, an EC3 documentary. Um, they probably got some Kurt Angle stuff. Um, but like they should have they should do more with the people they have while they have them there. You know what I mean? That type of content is great. That's really good content. And they stopped doing that a while ago. Um, but it, that that's really good content, man. You know what I mean? Like that's the type of stuff where again, if somebody does end up in WWE, you can always point them back to, hey, look at this time they had an Impact Wrestling. You know what I mean? Look at this behind the scenes footage of, you know, who they were then. You know what I mean? But, um, you know, whatever. We're not going to go on to, go off on a tangent tonight. All right, fair enough. So, but but it is huge. It's, it's we've been waiting for that day that Impact would get name dropped on WWE television. There's been opportunities with, you know, AJ Styles been there for so long and it just never happened there was the tna joke that kurt angle dropped on kevin owens and um let's just say zicky dice sammy dane sammy zane several years ago where he's like i, I hear tna's hiring yeah you know, that, was, right. that was you know 
but that was when they just kind of transitioned over to Impact. TNA wasn't a thing anymore. So I, I think cool. like um, you mentioned Scott Demore's tweet, and I, I think that bears a little bit of, of recognition though, right? Like, you know, so Scott Demore's tweet was, well, 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 congrats to Impact Wrestling Knockouts World Champion Mickey James, and congrats to WWE, he at WWE, for finally walking through the forbidden door, welcome to the party. And I listen, I like that. I like that. Because it's, it's that's not like a bow down. You know what I mean? That's not like a bow down. And, and it says, though, it says we're open to working. Let's keep working. Now, does that mean WWE is going to keep working? You know, not only when it's to benefit them, you know, but um, I think you got to give impact credit, man. Like in the past year, and this is the thing that just annoys me about people that talk about wrestling, like intentionally leaving impact out of the conversation, like impact wrestling brought new Japan and AEW back together because they weren't talking impact wrestling brought a AEW and new Japan back together. And uh, so, so in this year impact has worked with everybody over the course of the last calendar year, they've worked with AEW, new Japan, triple a they've worked with ROH and now WWE. Like, give these guys some credit, man. You got to give these guys some credit. Give Scott Demore some credit, man. Like, he's rebuilt bridges. Like, Impact was, you know, all the 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 the, the, the bastard stepchild of the wrestling industry. And again, in the last calendar year, he has had Impact working. He, being Scott Demore, has gotten Impact to work in some capacity with every major wrestling company in the world give this man his credit yeah and then uh, i don't know that they did anything with noah this year but i mean that's happened you mm -hmm. know it, it's a matter of time till you know it's on a much smaller scale but something with mlw will happen at some point because they, right. they're the smallest company they don't want to be completely you know left out of this so let's transition from mickey james we're going to talk about Rohit Raju and uh, I'm going to for the most part give you the floor on this because I've already said my piece um, on social media and I'll, I'll add to the conversation here a little bit but he was um, I don't know if he was released or contract not renewed but uh, not brought back by Impact Wrestling uh, kind of what he didn't I, I did talk to him directly a little bit and uh, I didn't say this but someone else mentioned that he uh kind of saw the writing on the wall because I guess his new contract offer wasn't what he thought it was going to be, mm -hmm. you know? So, um, but I, I did chat with him a little bit. So I, I, you know, I'm pretty confident in saying that this was not his choice. Yeah. And um, give me, you know, I've already given my thoughts for the most part on him. So what, what are your thoughts on what happened here? Yeah, man. I, I think that um, I think letting Rohit Raju, Hakeem Zayn, walk out the door. I think that's a miss for Impact Wrestling. I know that they got a lot of stuff going on and they are, you know, trying to expand their ways and their roster in whatever ways possible. But I think you got to take care of your people. You know what I mean? Like you got to take care of the people who are there, you know, like for you. And he's been on that roster for a long time. And <clears throat> not just that, but he has grown so much as a performer right in front of my eyes. Uh, while he's been on Impact Wrestling. Um, for a long time, right? They just had him positioned as, you know, like basically an enhancement talent, um, <clears throat> excuse me, in the Desi Hit Squad, right? Like those guys were, were, they never did anything of note in Impact Wrestling. And it seemed like overnight, he flipped it into being a single and he was cutting good promos. You could see he was in great shape. And like he flipped from, a straight up jobber to a, a, a quality X division champion, a chicken shit hill that you wanted to see get beat. He was scheming and, and, and doing things to get the title and backstabbing people. And he was a quality performer and in the wrestling business, you know, an overused term is, you know, grabbing the brass ring um, or, you know, you know, taking the opportunity, you know, making the most out of your opportunity, that type of thing. And, you want to talk about somebody who made the most out of your opportunity? There you go. There you go. Because I, I can't think of too many people who have gone from being positioned as nothing to making themselves like um, a, a credible champion on a wrestling show. 
And he absolutely did that. He did that, you know, in my eyes and in the, and in the eyes of all the fans uh, uh, across the Impact fan base. And so he will be missed. Um, you know, Hakeem Zane, wherever you are, you know, headed next, man, like make sure you let us know because I'll definitely be watching um, a, a phenomenal talent. And, you know, he's done well at everything they've given him to do. And I'm sure he'll continue to do that wherever he goes next. So you know, uh, see you down the road. Go ahead. You know, it makes the whole gut check. I know it was Global Forged when he won, but it makes the whole gut check thing mean nothing. I mean, Jackson Stone actually won gut check. It's been over two years since he won. And he's just setting up chairs for impact. I guess he did, yeah, you know, the, the throwback throwdown, but yeah, I saw that. So he's not, he's not doing jack shit. And then Rohit, he won the show. So that that's like, they're saying, Hey, we're trying to build a star here. And you know, th- then yep, they let yep. him go. And it's, it's like, okay, so are you, are you making cuts because you want to bring in Mike Bennett and some of these dudes who it, it almost seems like, you're chasing someone with a little bit of a name. You're probably mm. going to have to pay him a little bit more, but the results are not going to be better than, you know, what right. he was doing. Right. You know, right. you, you can't, there's no one you can bring from ring of honor. That's like, Oh, they cut a better promo than Rohit. I mean, that's just, right. Or that's going to have a better character than him. Right. You know, right. I mean, right. No, I think you got, again, I think it's important to invest in the impact guys. You know what I mean? I think it's important to invest in the impact. And listen, like I get into this conversation with people all the time. One thing about wrestling fans that really just really pisses me off is wrestling fans correlate good with how someone is presented on TV. You could take Rohit Raju and make him undefeated on TV for three years straight if you wanted to. Okay, you could do it because it's a TV show. It's a TV show. Okay, (laughs) like Dang, man, like, uh, like I was having this conversation a, a, a lot about, um, you know, Big E just lost the WWE champion championship. Um, you know, he took the pin in a five-way and Brock Lesnar, whatever. I was like, oh, well, Brock's a bigger star. Well, duh, Brock's a bigger star. But how did Brock become a star? Brock became a star because you let him beat The Rock. And then you let him beat Hulk Hogan. And then you let him beat The Undertaker in, in his def- undefeated street of WrestleMania. Then you let him maul John Cena. And then you let him beat Roman Reigns, the, you know, three or four WrestleManias in a row, right? Like, that's how you make someone a star. People don't just become, it's not just like, oh, look at Brock's eyes. This guy's a star. Like, no, somebody's a star because you make them a star, okay? You make people a star. So again, you know, you look at a guy like ha- Hakeem Zane, you know, he has all the tools to be a feature player. Why not? Why not? You know, give him a spot, give him something good to do and promote him and see what happens. But don't, you know, have somebody, you know, hanging out in the middle of your card, you know, never giving him any props and be like, yeah, you're not really bringing anything to the table. What are you bringing to the table? Right? Like, what are you giving them to do? So I, that's just, just a little a little rant, man. That I, I feel like people... People get lost in the sauce, man, with the idea of saying who's good and who's not, who's a star and who's not, who deserves it and who doesn't. And I'm like, dude, like, you got to understand, man, like, this is this is a TV show. People play the roles that they are cast in, you know, like, that's just, it's, it's that simple. It's that simple. Like, we talk so much about how Jake something could be positioned as, like, you know, the next rising superstar in this company. And he's not cast in that role. And it, it's weird. Right, because he appears to have all the tools, but again, just as easily, right? He could be cast. He could be cast as Goldberg. You know what I mean? So you know, again, guy, everybody's got to remember that, man. Like this is it's a TV show. Anybody can be anything. I think. I think though, it's important with brand building that you have a consistent roster. So when I gave my opinion on this earlier, I brought up Ring of Honor for an example. Granted, they're not really running full-fledged anymore but over the years with the exception of the guys who are like we're leaving to go to nxt you didn't hear ring of honor just like okay we're we're just going to release people we're not going to renew people because we're trying to sign they they kept the same people for years because that was part of the brand of the company so you you connected jay lethal and and uh silas young and um 
some of these. You just connected them. You know, uh, who was the Peacock dude? Uh, Dalton Castle. The Dalton Castle. Like you connected these guys with the company, and then you kind of look at the Impact roster, and it's like it, it's it's as the days progress, it's becoming more and more like feels like an independent company because the 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 names are just changing. You know, like there's the, there's not a certain core group of wrestlers that that are the Impact brand. You know, right, I mean, yes, right. you, Eddie Edwards, Sammy Callahan, Moose, Rich Swan. There are some guys. Don't get me wrong. I'm not saying nobody is, but if you compare it to the example I'm telling you about Ring of Honor and their roster, it is just a one big cohesive brand where the Impact brand is a little bit of a carousel. You know, pe- people swapping in and out Mm -hmm. you know so i don't know um aew kind of has the pillar thing you know the four pillars Mm -hmm. i don't agree with the pillars because i i hate a couple of those people uh darby (laughs) allen and jungle boy i hate them both like with absolute passion so i understand impact's a smaller company and and it's not you know people aspire bigger than being at impact you know, but, right. you know, but the general concept has to be there. They have, you have to have your guys where you're just like, yo, this, these are our handful of guys that we want to build to be stars because you know, that what I had said a couple of days ago on YouTube, there is value to some people to be the next Eddie Edwards, you know, right. where you where you're like, well, I'm going to reach main, main event status with a company. My spot is secure. And I'm always going to be here and I'm going to, I'm going to be paid well enough to make a great living. Right, you know, right. I might not be hitting that WWE level, but there, there's, there's something in being that Sammy Callahan, that Eddie Edwards, that Moose, that role, you know, mm-hmm. where someone could be very, very happy for a long time doing that, but you got to get people there. And there's no reason Rohit shouldn't have gotten an opportunity to, to elevate because as you kind of alluded to, he made everything work no matter what he was given, he made it work. He had all these tools and it's like, well, what else do you want? I know from talking with him personally, um, you know, he, he's someone I've got to know pretty decent over the years that, you know, he did challenge himself and constantly be in the ear of impact management. Like, what else do you need from me? What can I, I really want to get, to that level. I want to be one of the dudes around here. Like I, I know that he was like that. So you're getting rid of those dudes who are loyal, who really want to be there just for these dudes that you bring in dudes from ring of honor, or whatever, most likely AEW has already told these guys, no. So they're right. like, okay, well we'll, we'll settle for impact. You know, you know what I mean? So you're getting rid of, you know, someone who really wants to be there for someone who's potentially I'm not saying it's a fact, potentially settling for the company. Right. And then right. if another opportunity opens up, they're going to leave and then, then you got nothing. So but with this being said, who do you think else is on the chopping block? Because if you cut row heat, like there's, there's more coming. There can't just be him. Mm-hmm. And he's not even at the bottom of the card. So that's, you know, there, there's gotta be some people underneath him that are like, Floating around, where it's, I think we're gonna make these cuts. We we already speculate that Brandy Loren and um, Kimberly. Uh, yeah, are gone. right, right, right. You know, like that appeared to be a write-off, right? Uh, yeah. <laughs> um, she said, "Your time is up." And yeah. then she like red electrocuted him. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah. Uh, who else? I hate to say it, but you'd have to think Jake something. Yeah. Um, just by the way he's been used, right? They're not using him like they value him at all. Um, I thought I I had said that I thought this match he had with Jonah was gonna be his last match in Impact. I was mm. sure of it. So he's actually on this Hard to Kill pre-show, but I would I still feel pretty confident in saying that's that's if not his last match, gonna be very close to it, which would suck. Right. But it's clear that they don't see him the way that yeah we right. kind of see him. Yeah, you yeah. Know? And I agree. Totally agree. Even in this match with Jonah, you know, Dave Penzer. There's this whole ring announcement for Jonah, and he goes, and his opponent, Jake something. Like, <laughs> not he, he, they were like from, you know, 
I think he's from Michigan, maybe. Yeah. <laughs> he, he, he weighs in at this. He's from here. Nothing. Yep. Just his yep. opponent, Jake something. And then at the top of the show, there's like, Jonah will be in action tonight. And whenever right. they say that, that means the we're, whether the opponent's on the roster or not, like we're treating yeah. this as a – we're presenting this as a squash match or a – Right. Match. You know what exactly. I mean? Exactly. They weren't like, hey, later tonight, Jonah and Jake something. No, that that's not how they painted this picture at all. So, yeah, right. you would have to think he's he's next. Uh, I, yeah, I'm yeah, his, I last mean... thing, his match graphic for the match with Jonah, you know, he's doing his flex. The look on his face was like, can we just get this picture over with? Mm-hmm. Like, if you, if you pull up that graphic, dude, it wasn't – he didn't have the intensity of his other pictures. He's just kind of like – all right, I'm here. You know, yeah. you know what? I, uh, I always I see that a lot with Brian Cage. I feel like everything with Brian Cage is like just going through the motions. You know what I mean? Like he's just, like he has his poses that he does, and it always looks like I'm just going through the motions. Like it yeah. doesn't look like intense, you know, like at all, whatever. Uh, but yeah, who else might be on the chopping block? Um, uh, Lawrence D. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> they that's barely use, use him at all. I could see him. Like, and if he just disappeared off the show, then, you know. And by the way, you know what's really whack about hearing that uh, Rohit's not re-signing is that they just brought in the other Desi Hit Squad guy. So yeah, it's they basically like just saying, we're swapping out one Indian guy for another. That is oh, he's trash. gone. He's going to be gone, dude. They're not going to keep him. You think? They're not going to keep Raj. Because they're probably looking at it like, you're just a cheaper Rohit. He, Raj hasn't shown any... There are no signs to say that Ro- that Raj could survive on his own. No, not at all. Not at all. Not yeah. at all. But uh um, haven't even remotely again, presented him like that. If they just want a body, and again, he's probably cheaper than Rohit. If they just want a body and they want to check a diversity box, then I could see that being the case. I could see that being the case. And um, you know, like I think that's trash, but you know, but would it surprise me? No, not at all. So I think that's, 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 that's a thing. Um, is there anybody else? I think definitely looks like they'd be on the chopping block. Uh, all, all I know is if you, if you're releasing Rohit, I don't want to see when this new set of tapings kicks off, I don't want to see her nan daddy and swinger right. out there. <laughs> you know, you got to keep the swing man. Daddy. I can see him keeping swinger, but it, it almost <laughs> feels like they wrote Hernandez off TV. Okay. This episode. Because I I can't imagine it's like what's how's Hernandez gonna respond to the like no one gives a shit dude when when they um on this episode when they did the chair thing on him and they injured him I'm like dude it, no one cared in the crowd no one gave a shit right it was, it was just like they're like why should we care yeah we don't we don't yeah. you haven't given us a reason to care about Hernandez and then Ace Austin hasn't done anything important in forever Madman Fulton hasn't beat anybody like. I, right, I feel right. like he could be booked against my uncle Hector and still lose. You know, I um, mean, Uncle Hector might have some moves that we don't know about. You know what I mean? Like he might. Uh, Fujiwara armbar. You know, <laughs> <laughs> you never know. <laughs> does Uncle Te- un- Does Uncle Hector have a pro wrestling tea shop? No. <laughs> <laughs> what, what, so, what do you think about Ful- uh, Man Man Fulton sticking around? Um. I, so I saw him and Ace. Um, I saw I saw something on social media that him and Ace are taking tag team dates. Um, I, I feel like for whatever reason, I feel like they want to use him. Like even though he doesn't win, he's on TV a lot. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? So, so I don't know. I don't, I, I just he's he's like their big their big jobber. Uh, <laughs> you know, like if if, if they ever need to like put a big threatening guy like in a match, they'll use him, even though you'd be shocked if he ever won. Yeah, right, right. So I feel like they'll keep him because they I feel like they see some value in him, even though it's not like a, a value of somebody who's gonna be presented as a winner. Yeah, I got it. fair enough, fair enough. Plus, I think that like having him as uh as Ace Austin's heater, I think they see that as like um you know, like Sean and Diesel. I think that's how they look at that. Mm-hmm. Even though they don't treat Ace like Sean, they definitely don't treat him like Diesel. But yeah, yeah, that's the Impact version, the great value. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. <The> no frills. <laughs> yeah, so I can't think of anyone else 
off the top of my head. Those, those are some of the names. I don't know that we're going to see Finn Juice around much longer. Mm. Um, I don't know if Mickey James will be back on TV. Like, if she loses the title, she has no reason to be on Impact TV. True. Right, right. I mean, people right. want to see her on TV. That's not what I'm saying. There's value in her being on TV, but she's not just going to hang around to have a, a mid card knockout for you. Like, that's just not going to happen. No, but I, but so here's the thing, right? Like, if Deanna Perazzo gets the title back, like, who does she have to work with? She already worked with Jordan Grace. I know it was a while ago, but like, I don't know that enough has changed that you, you, you still have to heat up a Deanna Perazzo Jordan Grace feud again um well, rock c is the the program that they're talking about is that gonna be like a whole what i mean roxy ain't got nowhere else to wrestle right so yeah. uh so that program is gonna have to be on impact so yeah um but then but why not why not have why not let mickey beat um let mickey beat beat diana keep the title and then you can still do diana and roxy you can then you can do um you could do like mickey and tasha steals right and you yeah. could have uh and, and you could have uh diana cost mickey the title against tasha steals right um because you know let's say diana's like frustrated that she can't beat mickey so she causes mickey to lose to somebody else then we do a blow off between mickey and diana right and then that gets mickey out of here and then diana can you know you can it doesn't have to be the title feud or nothing you know what i'm saying like you can yeah. do more than one running feud. Like it this always is. What I was is saying. Though. Right, right. But this is what I was saying about like Rich Swan, right? Like you didn't have to like, you know, push Rich Swan, Rich Swan into losing to Morrissey and then into tag teams once he lost the world title. Like he could still be doing a feature program. You know what I mean? Like, and so the same thing here. You've got Deanna, you've built her up. It doesn't have to be champion or nothing. She can still be doing something good and winning, right, without the title. Like mm -hmm. the journey can be her road back to the title. You know what I mean? Like, look how evil she's being on her way back to the title. Like, it, you can do that. So, like, why not? You know, why not? Because I, again, if you just if you put the title right back on Diana, I, I I'm curious as to who where she who she's going to work with next. You know what I mean? So, well, Chelsea's um, pretty. She's going to be in the picture here soon. I'm I'm fairly true. confident Chelsea's going to win this Ultimate X thing. You think so? Yeah, I'm, I'm fairly confident. They're featuring her so heavily. She's the heaviest featured girl in the sh in that program. Mm. I mean, that match on the show because okay. she's she's involved with Cardona in the True. world title picture. True. They're teasing. Okay, well, we're both gonna have big nights. They're not gonna kick it off by Chelsea not reaching her goal. It's gonna be like, okay, Chelsea took care her, her, her end of the bargain. Is Cardona gonna take care of his? And just the fact that they have them on screen together. In this like overly baby face role. That's what I'm thinking. Like, dude, I think they're gonna sw switch the both of them. But mm. um, I could be I could be wrong. I don't know. That would be interesting though, right? Yeah, that would be, be very be... very interesting. Yeah. I mean, they're heels in NWA. They're uh, Cardona's heels everywhere. You know, Chelsea and NWA though is like the hot mess Chelsea, which I much prefer. But I don't know. If you we'll like the hot that. mess Chelsea better? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Not the. Uh, not the old like with the bride with with the wedding dress and stuff. I mean, she updated the character to where she's just more crazy, you know. Yeah. So more I think crazy. like I think um I think she's kind of evolved that a little bit, right? Like she's come out wrestling. She hasn't necessarily been like the hot mess thing, and I think that's okay, right? Because the hot mess it it happened, and she kind of did that when she first reappeared in Impact, but she hasn't really been doing that since. And I think that's okay, and I think that's actually good. Because I think that, you know, like she has a, a, a good fun personality. Um, again, like I think people know she was like a stunt woman. Um, you know, like, I mean, I feel like her as is, you know, I think she just, she presents as somebody who like, you know, she, she likes wrestling, you know, she's here to do something wild and crazy and she's trying to win. Like, I don't think you got to over characterize that. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. I, I think that like, I, I think that like, I don't think she needs to do the crazy freaky hot mess thing in order to be interesting. I think she's interesting as is. Um, and again, it doesn't have to be she's interesting because she's married to Matt Cardona. It could just be like, she's an interesting person. She's somebody who we saw here at the beginning of her career and she's traveled, she's going different places and now she's back in Impact and she's a more complete player and let's see who she is now. You know what I mean? Almost like, um, 
you know, Scott Hall and Kevin Nash returning to WCW uh, as, as the Scott Hall and Kevin Nash post WWE, right? Those guys were both in WCW trying out weird gimmicks back in the day. Then they went to WWF and, you know, they developed a little more, they got more famous and then they came back to WCW to the NWO. And it was cool because they were totally different characters. And I think like doing something like that with Chelsea Green, I think is, is perfectly fine. Like, I don't think you need like a major, you know, like hokey gimmick. I think just, just her personality as is, is very interesting. You know what I mean? Yeah. So I think that, um, like, I don't think she needs like a gimmick gimmick. You know what I mean? I think like her gimmick can just be like that. She's somebody who, you know, she's trying to wrestle. She's trying to win. She, and she's like a homegrown star. I, I think like people. Yeah, she is. Yeah, you know what I mean? Like, I, feel, I feel like, you know, it, it, Impact doesn't embrace that enough. You know what I mean? They don't embrace that enough. She's an Impact person. You know what I mean? She's an Impact person. She might have worked some places before she was on Impact, but, like, she really cut her teeth working on Impact. You know what mm-hmm. I mean? And then, you know, she went to NXT, got some more seasoning, which is cool. You know, got some, some time in WWE, which is cool. But, you know, she's back. She's back in Impact. And, like, she's an Impact person, man. Like, show her some love. And I think that... um but also they didn't like stick the belt right on her right away. You know what I mean? She's been back in impact for like what, almost six, seven months now. Yeah. And they haven't like, they haven't had her around the title. And I think that's good. So I think, and you know, I'm glad you mentioned that she could be the person to take the title off Deanna. And I think I'd be okay with that. I mm-hmm. think I'd definitely be okay with that. So, so now putting that in perspective, but see what I don't like here is this leaves out Tasha Steels. I don't like that. And I feel like, again, <laughs> I feel like that knockouts knockdown show. If you guys, everybody here watching this, if you haven't watched the knockouts knockdown show, go back and watch it, man. That was Tasha Steele's show. Tasha Steele's man. Like that was her moment, right? Like everybody has a moment. I can tell you the exact moment in high school where I realized I was a good football player. You know what I'm saying? Right? Like, like everybody has that moment where you realize like where, where you, where you kind of come of age, right? You know what I mean? Mm. And like, that that knockouts knockdown pay-per-view in my eyes that was Tasha Steele's moment where it was like I'm not just fire and flavor I'm not just backstage skits like I'm the whole package um and I'm telling you if y'all have not watched that go watch it go watch it tonight and and I'm telling you you will have a whole new respect for what Tasha Steele's brings to the table and the fact that she can carry a whole show being the feature centerpiece so um as we're talking through this, right? We've talked ourselves into Deanna as the champion, into Chelsea Green as the champion, um, <laughs> which could be booked all the way through Bound for Glory, for all we know. But, uh, but, but, d- but that path, you know, like I said, it leaves out Tasha Steeles, and I don't like that. I think she needs to be a part of this picture because I, I, it could bring something fun to the table. You know what I mean? It could bring something something really fun to the table. I think she's a unique performer. She has a unique personality from, you know, anybody else they got on the roster right now. And I think you really just would be missing out, like leaving money on the table by not featuring her and letting her see what she, by, you know, seeing what she can do in a feature spot. Yeah, they didn't capitalize on her even a little bit after Knockouts Knockdown. It, it just went back to the, well, Mercedes Martinez, she used to be in WWE. That's the headline. Or, or, you know, she's going to get this little run, this, you know, little miniature push so she can get a knockouts title shot. And it's just like, then the actual knockouts, girls like Tasha Steele just standing there holding the bags when right. Mercedes Martinez is now leaving for EW. Right. You know, um, let's talk about, we're on the subject of firing and releases and all that stuff. So this is another one I've already kind of gave my opinion on, but Matt Stryker, was not brought back and it seems like it you know what it's being reported about pwy is that it was performance based which mm-hmm. is insane because over the years impact has had some shit commentary and they've never pulled the plug on it you know what i mean they only ever pulled the plug when they kind of had to so this is just odd that they actually were like okay well he's not doing a good job which he wasn't let's let's be freaking real like I'll say since Turning Point, he's been great. This particular episode, you know, he brought some passion in certain certain parts. When he started going over the taping schedule, he did exactly what I said the week before. Like, when you have that kind of stuff, you got to change the inflection of your voice and just, yeah, let's go over the 
road schedule, you know, this and like, I mean, he changed the way he delivered his voice, his excitement. Um, so I have to acknowledge that he is good at what he does. He's been good the last couple months, but his run for the most part is for me. And I think for a lot of people has been really underwhelming because he's capable of a lot freaking more so i know you're not much of a commentary guy i know that's kind of my thing and i you know i go on my rant every week about the commentary but do you got anything on the striker thing you know or is it just like whatever to you i don't care about commentary no it's it's listen it's not that i don't care about commentary but to me it's either like um it's it's like it's it's almost like offensive line play right like you notice it when it's really good like Mauro Ronaldo or really bad like Josh Matthews you know what i mean like <clears throat> you notice it, you th- that, that that's for me that's for me like like i said i notice it when it's in, when it stands out really far in one direction or the other and um and a lot of it is just kind of there you know um and and i felt like Matt Stryker was somebody who as a voice i think he was fine <clears throat> when he first came to impact, I thought it was an exciting change. It was a good change. It was a refreshing change. He didn't feel like somebody who was just there. He always felt like somebody who was capable of so much more. Yeah. It felt like he was really underperforming. I think that's, that's kind of what I felt listening to Josh Matthews. I, I mean, Josh Matthews, Matt Stryker, when listening to Matt Stryker, um, I, I felt like he was always capable of so much more. And so, um, yeah, I mean, I just, I just, I just feel like uh, I didn't think he was bad, but he was kind of just there, and I think that I wanted him to be like, wow, you know, right? Again, like if you guys remember Mauro Ronaldo, right? Like Mauro Ronaldo is a phenomenal call, man, phenomenal, so good, so good. Like people think, you know, the Mamma Mia and all that stuff is hokey. I love it. I love it. You make it feel exciting, you know. Like, I, I love that. They need to find somebody. And by the way, I, I just want to say this. Tony Schiavone, right? Tony, the fa- the world famous Tony Schiavone. Tony Schiavone was, you know, uh, uh, a minor league baseball announcer. Find, do your research, man. Like, go find somebody. Man, like, I <clears throat> I used to, I used to, uh, I used to, um, I used to uh, do, do college football broadcast with, um, uh, a buddy of mine, this, this guy named Randy, Randy Brochu, shout out Randy Brochu, the uh, voice of the pioneers of Sacred Heart University. And he's an excellent call, man. Like, you know what I mean? Like, just, just do some research, like find some people who are really good calls. Like, again, pay somebody, pay somebody to get on the internet and start looking up good radio calls, then get on the phone and ask somebody if they'd be interested in trying calling wrestling. It doesn't matter if they've ever called wrestling before. You know what I mean? Like find somebody who's interested in doing something fun, give them a fun environment to work in. And, and like I said, like try out somebody new, you don't have to just keep recycling, you know, names that the people know, like find somebody who's good at calling action, you know, Mm -hmm. like, um, uh, in the NFL, I love Gus Johnson. I love his calls, man. Like he's just, you know, he just has like these good, exciting calls that, you know, just they make the game feel fun to watch. Mm-hmm. And so, like, I'd love to find somebody like that, somebody with a good voice that you know throws little good things out there from time to time. And again, it does not have to be a name somebody knows. It doesn't have to be somebody who was in WWE at one point. It doesn't have to be somebody who was in you know ROH or New Japan at one point. It's just got to be somebody who's good. So do the work, do the work, and find somebody who can be the voice of Impact Wrestling, who's just good at commentary and will enjoy what they're you know enjoy relaying to the viewer at home, right? What they're seeing in the ring. Yeah, and this is a really important hire because whoever they hire is going to be the dude, you know, or the girl, but they're going to be the voice. Like, you can't switch it out again in a couple months. Like, you got to commit whatever this changes, you have to commit to it going forward and say, okay, so make it someone who really knows how to paint a picture. That, that, that's, a, that's a great voice that can really add something to the show. And it's... It's crazy that they actually heard what I felt like I was hearing because I remember I was pointing out times where when Josh Alexander beat Minoru Suzuki and he's just like, 
he's going to do it. No. <laughs> that's, that's how his response was to the main event, the pin in the main event of the show. He's going to do it. And then earlier in the show, Moose, you know, threw Eddie Edwards at the post and he had the, the chair wrapped around his neck. He's just like, mm. he just broke his neck. <laughs> but let me ask you, though. Let me ask, you though. Was that an episode of Impact where they were doing it in post-production? I think that makes a difference. I think that makes a huge difference. I think it's tough, man. Like you listen, if you say, hey, um, come in on Tuesday morning and voice over the show, that is that's a hundred times different than you're at ringside, you're feeling the vibe of the crowd, you're feeling the vibes Moose is giving off, and you know what I mean? And you're reacting to that. That is a hundred times different. And I think it's tough. And, and then two, again, to me, that's that's kind of the fault of the company. Right, because if you're telling people like, yo, again, come in Tuesday and voice the show, um, you don't know what they're doing on Monday night. You know what I mean? Like you might ask somebody to come in here on Tuesday and they need to wake up. Like maybe they you need to you need to record, you, you know, you need them to voice over the show at 9 a.m. Right. Like maybe they're not a morning person. So maybe that's 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 what you get, you know. So um, now don't get me wrong, that person still has to be a professional, you still gotta show up and do your job and deliver, but um, you know, one of the things I always learned about, like when you're getting ready to go out on stage, man, like you always got to think that, you know, the energy that you give off is the energy you're going to get back. You know what I mean? But if you're just sitting in a room with D Lo Brown watching the show and reacting to it, you're there's no way it has got to be damn near impossible to have the same reaction as you have when it's happening right in front of your face. Right. Impossible. Yeah. So, yeah, I'll, I'll give them that. I saw a huge difference when it was live between the two of them in general, but the change I really, really think was needed. They're making all, all the changes. I, I, I shouldn't say all because we're still here and we own the night, but they're making <laughs> the majority of the changes that we talk about on here that I've been talking about forever. You know, they're, they're just starting one by one to do them, especially in areas where I didn't even think they would, which, you know, commentary being one. Mm. Let's talk about one more thing here. Um, Hard IQ has a couple changes that mm-hmm. they're making. So the ones that we know, and there could be more, right. is that we don't know if Rich Swan's going to compete. Oh, yeah. I'm, I'm fairly mm-hmm. confident in saying that Tommy Dreamer will replace him if he doesn't. <laughs> because it's not a spot for a debut or anything like that. You can't just be like, oh, you know, and who's going to show up? Like, it's a feud no one gives a fucking shit about. Mm-hmm. Yeah, right. and you know what's funny about this hardcore war in, in true impact fashion they never explained what the rules were until this episode and also you know i saw on social media oh this is like a people refer to it as a war games type which it's that general oh, really? concept that, that's kind of how for lack of better term they're putting it i do want to say they had one of these matches before because mm-hmm. i remember saying and that i mean when i say before i mean not that long ago because I remember saying, um, I if I were them and I was booking this, I would have each wrestler bring his own weapon with them down to the ring. Right. Maybe I said that for the knockouts monster ball. Maybe that's what I was talking about. But if it's a gauntlet format, I think that would be a cooler way if, you know, Alicia came down with her kendo stick or someone came down with a steel, just a weapon of choice. Someone came running with a steel chair, something like that. But yeah, in true fashion, we just thought it was a hardcore shit show. And now they're like, okay, well, you know, because all of a sudden they're just like, oh, the kid, they're wrestling for the advantage. Mm-hmm. Which is funny because you had four former champions on your on the good guy side and they had Heath represent <laughs> um, against Impact Tag Team Champion. You had like two former world champions on there. I mean, come on, dude. Right. Former right. Division champion, former tag team champion. Let's, let's get, let's get, let's get Heath out there. But so anyway, that's a possibility. We know that Rachel Ellering is out and Alicia is going to replace her, which is weird because on TV, Alicia's like, well, I want to be in the match. And she's the only one that wasn't. And then on social media, when Rachel had the whole birthday thing, Alicia was like, Hey, you know, you're, you're in the knockouts ultimate X. You should be happy. Like, it just almost comes off like a storyline, but I don't believe that it is. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. I, You know what? When I heard Rachel was out, I automatically thought she t- she had a positive COVID test. Have we heard that Rachel had a positive COVID test? 
No, see, and that's the point I was going to make because we, we know that the inspiration, not the, is it the, the inspiration is out. Right. They said due to positive COVID tests. So if, if they didn't say that for Rachel, there's more to it. There has to be more to it. She hasn't tweeted anything about impact in weeks. Interesting. It's not in her, her bio. You know, I feel wow. like there's more to it. I, I don't, I don't have those connections anymore to find this shit out. So yeah. I, yeah, I that that is interesting. That is interesting. Huh. Huh. That is interesting. Wow. Hmm. Yeah, so you know what I'm saying. <laughs> yeah, so the, there there's there's some changes here. I don't know if the inspiration if they're going to I don't know if the influence is still going to wrestle. Uh I think it would be a cool spot for them to wrestle the allure personally. Uh, you know, Angelina Love and, and Mandy Leon. Mandy Leon cool. is someone that I think is a like star. Um, but see, here's the thing that I think is is also like, you know, interesting about that is like, why wouldn't you promote that, right? Get some pay per view buys. Yeah, right. Like to me, it, it just it would make so much sense, right? Like just you know, um, give me something where you you know they, they did this years ago on nxt they were doing a match i want to say i could have these people totally wrong but i think it was like Sami Zayn versus like jushin thunder liger or something like that and it was they so they, they had Sami Zayn had a regular match on nxt then on the video board this person i believe it was jushin thunder liger just came on the video board and was like i'll see you at takeover and everybody's like oh you know what I mean? Yeah, it was right. it was him. I re- I remember that. Yeah, and so and and so you just you you promote the match, right? And you just again, like you don't have to have that person doesn't have to do appearances. Just promote the match, and it just be like, hey, this is one of the attractions. This thing you have not seen, you have a chance to see at this pay per view. And so, if you're gonna do something like, uh, you know, again, like have the allure come out, like, what's the point of the surprise if 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 the pay per view buys are already in? You know what I mean? Like, well, you want to surprise people, you know, the people who, who have paid for it so you can, so they can say, hey, maybe next time, maybe next time, um, you know, we'll see another surprise. But, I mean, I don't know. I'm just saying, man. To me, it just makes sense, right? Like, it makes sense to promote something if you're trying to get more pay-per-view buys. Like, aren't you trying to get more buys? Right? Like, that is not the, is not why we're here. So, you know, if you if you had something like that in in the can, to me it would make sense to promote it. And maybe they will the day of. We, you know, we we don't really know. So we're gonna see. Um, it seems like most Impact pay per views seem to have some kind of last minute change to them because of the way that yeah. they announce the cards way ahead of time. You know, like Eric Young when he famously was on the card for the longest time, even though everyone knew he wasn't gonna wrestle. Mm-hmm. And then the day of, they're like, okay, he's gonna have a mystery replacement. Right. Um, the other change that was made before we wrap things up was that they initially announced that the X division title match was going to be on YouTube, like the pre-show and mm-hmm. people lost their minds. Uh, the YouTube logo popped up on the episode of impact on the graphic people lost their minds. And then immediately after the show, like, okay, well it's been moved to the main card. So if it feels like the people's voices had spoken and told impact, we don't want this. The thing is a pre-show people correlate that with a show, with a match that doesn't matter because mm-hmm. that's what it's traditionally been. I commend them for, because I've said this in the past, I commend them for trying to put a pat match on a pre-show that mattered, that right. meant something, it had some stakes. Like there's right. nothing wrong with that, but I don't think it works when it's a title. When it's a title, people are like, okay, you're telling us because the history of a pre-show match being not, uh, something that doesn't matter. Fans hear, okay, a title's being on the pre-show that it, it it means nothing. They're treating the title like it means nothing. Like the digital media championship should be on the pre-show because that title means jack shit. But besides right, right. that, dude, the X, not the X division title, man. So people just, wrestling fans are just like, the biggest matches should be on the pay-per-view. That's just how they feel when they watch something. Again, I could commend them for trying to make a match that mattered, but it's 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 tricky territory when you're trying to feature one of your titles. Right. So instead right. we're going to get Jake something so he resurfaced and then it was Laredo kid, Chris Bay and 
Uh, Laredo Kid. Uh, yeah. Is, yeah. So, I think, yeah. I think so three right. of the people that were like, Impact should be building their company around these guys, but they <laughs> weren't even <laughs> completely left off the pay per view. Yeah. You know. Yeah. <laughs> Bullet Club left off the pay per view. But also, uh, you know, we got to have a come to Jesus meeting about this Bullet Club thing. It's 2022, and I'm not sure Bullet Club is a thing anymore. Yeah. I mean, it's it's at its lowest peak. I don't mm. know if I'd say it wasn't a thing. It's it's definitely at its lowest peak, and e- Impact might be the reason it is. <laughs> it, 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 that might be what, what it was. They cool. They, they just open up the fire hose and just douse those guys. Those guys came with flames, and they're like, let's, let's – completely put that fire out oh man everything That's in crazy. the power yeah <laughs> blame impact <laughs> yeah thanks obama <laughs> yeah i was just gonna say thanks obama <laughs> oh, but hey, hey they listened to the people they took that match off the pre-show now we're getting a match that again means nothing yeah but, but that's what i'm saying make it don't have random multi-person matches that mean nothing. Like I don't. Even, that's like what you do on a video game. If you're gonna have four guys fight each other, at least that was the number one contendership for the X Division Championship. That way, now you have a match on there that has some kind of stakes where it means something, and it's right. not the actual title on the line. You know. Right. But we'll see if they do that. Absolutely. Um, so. I'm tired, so I don't really feel like doing the any mailbag stuff tonight. <laughs> you got to be up early. Yeah, that's right. So. That's right. That's right. So yeah, man. So I think that was a nice little a nice little show to hold you guys over. Um, as always, drop your comments below. We do have a mailbag show coming where we're just gonna run through a bunch of the questions that we haven't been getting to from the comments. Um, you know, if you guys got some predictions for Hard to Kill, you know, um, if you guys want to talk about some of the stuff, some comments on what we had to say, go ahead and drop them with your name and where you're from in the comments below, and we will get back to you guys, you know, in your comments very, very soon. Uh, BQ, tell the people where they can find you out here in these social media streets. Uh, BQ Speaks on Twitter. Check out the Impact Lounge on Twitter. Uh, check out the Impact Lounge on Instagram. Check out Impact Impact Lounge on Facebook. And uh, check out my Lishism t-shirt because we come in for that <laughs> Ultimate X. Nice. We, I'm like Shannon Sharp, you know, like no matter what Team LeBron's on, we, yeah. Uh, yeah, we, we uh, you know, so yeah, we, we come in for that Ultimate X. Nice. Uh, who do you think is going to win Ultimate X? You think it's going to be Chelsea Green? Yeah, I really do. I, I, I'm, yeah. I'm really confident saying it's going to be her. Yes, yeah, she sounds. She seems like she would be the person to go to. But I'm gonna go with Tasha Stills, baby. I'm gonna go with Tasha Stills. Okay. That would oh, be oh, great. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Let's go. All right. Um, but you can find me uh, at TW talking about on your social media of choice. You could also follow my podcast page at Talking About Pod. You could also go subscribe to the at Talking About Pod YouTube channel. Um, thank you for everybody who has done so so far. You know all the comments all the tweets you know i respond to everyone uh that i possibly can um every interaction is greatly 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 appreciated so um you know again before you leave this channel make sure you like the video subscribe to the channel and hit the notification bell so you get notified each and every time we drop some fire content on this page and the most important thing you guys can do is tell a friend to tell a friend let's bring more people into the conversation for bq i'm tw peace